10 Essential Tips for Printmaking at Home. Welcome to this video by Susan Yates of Magenta Sky. And within this video, we're going to look at a few things to help you get the most out of the space you have available for successful printmaking. So this short video will go through those few top tips one by one to help you get the most out of setting up this home studio of yours. So many printmaking students and even professional printmakers carry out techniques of printmaking at home such as lino cut, wood cut or wood engraving. Now this may be because there are no professional printmaking studios near you or frankly this, the, simply the convenience and the cost of working at home is very attractive. So whatever your reasons, I've put together these top, I call them essential tips, to help you get the most out of setting up your own home studio. And this doesn't matter whether you're working simply on a dining room table or you're actually converting a space such as a garage or an outhouse into a dedicated studio space. Whatever the space that you have available, these tips will help you make the most out of it. And all the advice that I've put together here within this video has come through firstly my own experience when I've moved house quite a lot over the past and had to set up different studios in different houses or places that I had available to me. But often this is also um, from students that I've spoken to within my classes, them talking about the areas they've used for printmaking. Um, I'm going to see other artists, printmakers and just friends that have set up spaces that have, that have really made the most of the space available to them. So I want to share this with you to hopefully help you with your printmaking so it feels comfortable and you get the most out of it. A little bit about myself before I sort of crack on with those 10 tips. My name is Susan Yates. So I am a tutor, an author and an artist. And I began by doing a fine art degree, a printmaking degree at Loughborough University in 2002. And I studied there for four years um, and I learned all different printmaking techniques. We spent the whole time learning lots of different printmaking techniques. And interestingly, the studio we had was absolutely brilliantly equipped. It had so much equipment and I had a technician on hand to help us at all times. And then suddenly when I left university, I was, oh, I don't have a studio available to me and I certainly couldn't afford to pay to work in a professional printmaking studio or set my own up. And so very much a lot of the techniques that I have developed um, over my teaching and my experiences over the last 10 years are created so that printmaking is very accessible for those people that don't necessarily have a lot of space to work or a lot of money to spend on materials, tools and kitting out a really professional studio. So I've been teaching this for a long time um, in various arts venues and on one-to-one -one basis or within my own studio when I've had it available. Um, and as well as printmaking, I love all sorts of arts, crafts. So I do lots of sewing, lots of drawing, lots of crochet. And I've written a few books, I've written three books now. The first one is all about printmaking, Learning Lino Cut, which was launched in 2011. Bit of a surprise success, I wasn't expecting it. I did it just as something to have available um, for students when they came to workshops, but it's actually done really well. Um, and since then I've developed an online distance learning course in printmaking as well. So um, I essentially love teaching. I love sharing knowledge about arts and crafts, printmaking in particular to people. And um, so in 2015, this online distance learning course became available. So if you do want to go a little bit further with your printmaking, this will help you learn about all the different techniques that can be done from home. So that's a bit of an overview of me. I'm the owner of Magenta Sky. Um, I teach, I write books, I write a blog as well, which I have on the website and um, I have this online course. So just gives you a little bit of background as to who I am and why I'm talking to you today about printmaking. Okay, so let's dive in to these 10 essential tips for printmaking. Tip number one is find the right space. So when it comes to printmaking at home, it is really important to choose a dedicated space that you feel comfortable to work in. It kind of sets your intention that I'm a printmaker and I need space to work. So whether you've just started printmaking, so you're beginning for the first time, or you're a practicing printmaking artist or artist in another um, technique or art form, setting aside a dedicated space is equally as important to achieving good results. Now, some people are lucky enough to have a spare bedroom or room in their house, a garage, shed, or just space that they can actually convert permanently to a studio space. 
However, for the rest of us, it is simply that every time we come to printmaking, we perhaps use the dining room table or the kitchen work surface as our printmaking um, studio. Now, in my experience, it is also really helpful to let your family or whoever you live with know that this is your creative space. You want to carve it out as your space that you work and inform them that this is where you will be doing your printmaking regularly. As creative people, the environment that we use as our studio is really essential to allow our creative juices to flow. I certainly know this myself and if you have to keep moving or moving your materials around or tidy up after just half an hour, an hour of working, it can have such a detrimental effect on your creative output or your printmaking output. So what I'd say is perhaps wander around your home, look at all the different spaces that could be available for you to use and then select one that is your printmaking space, your kind of sacred space where you go to carry out printmaking. And this is the space that you want to call your home studio. So sourcing the right space is really essential. Now the second thing we need to do is once you've chosen the space available to you and the place you're going to use for your printmaking regularly is to plan out your printing area. So it goes without saying that in our home printmaking space we're going to be printing. Therefore the space that you use for printmaking, so the, the bit that we use here, needs to be carefully planned out in that we need to plan out our printing area, the area that you're going to be using for printing inks and potentially making a little bit of a mess. For example, if you have a spare room that you're going to be working in and perhaps you have cream carpets in that spare bedroom, you're certainly going to need to think about covering the floor with something before getting those inks out because you don't want to damage your cream carpet for example. So when you're planning out a printing area there are a few key things you need to include. First of all you're going to need a solid table with space to lay out all of your tools and materials. This doesn't need to be permanently but perhaps this is what you need to be able to get out on a regular basis. So you need space to lay out your paper you need a place to roll out ink. So I use Perspex sheets. On the picture on the right there, I get um, clip frames, which I buy from Ikea. I remove the frame and then I have the Perspex, so not the glass, it's Perspex that comes out of those. I lay them on the table and I can, I can literally set up anywhere. And I've got used to doing this over the years when I've hired rooms in halls, in art centres, in theatres, where I've just had to get my stuff out and start printmaking within a space of 10 to 15 minutes. And you can do this at home as well. Any kind of table, you can pop out these bits of Perspex and just get going. Um, the other thing you need obviously is a chair to sit on to work if you're going to be doing lots of carving out for lino cut, woodcut for example. Um, an area where you're going to actually um, do your burnishing. So if you're doing lino cutting, you're going to need to make sure you've got a space away from the ink to play stuff. And I'd also say that you need access to water for clearing up. Um, so all of those things, how and where you lay this out, will be very much determined by the space you have available. I find the best thing to do sometimes is to get a blank piece of paper or like a piece of graph paper and literally draw out the space that you have and kind of mark everything on there in scale um, where everything will go. Um, I think what I did um, a couple of times in the past where I've had a new sort of space to work in is I've done this, I've got a big bit of graph paper and then I've sort of scaled up, or scaled down, sorry, um, like my table, my chair, all the things that I have to fit in on my printing press um, down to tiny little bits of paper and then I move them about or use post-it notes on a piece of paper and kind of lay out exactly where you want everything to go. It will just make sure that you get the most out of your space because often we are very limited in terms of space. Um, and when it comes to printing, what you don't want to do is get your printing paper kind of in your ink or get in a bit of a muddle and you end up with paper with ink on it and then you put that on the floor and then the floor gets covered in ink and it can get quite messy quite fast. So I find if you just plan out where everything's going to be, it just makes life a lot easier and then you don't have to think about it when you actually come to the process of printing and you just want to get on and enjoy that creative or that technical process. Um, one tip also is in our introduction to printmaking course we provide you with a diagram for a good way to lay out your printing area um, so that can be a, a good thing to look at if you are able to. Okay so tip number three is good lighting. Um, I love this image I mean you may not have a big empty room or a space like this to start with but I just wanted to get the idea that you need windows with hopefully natural daylight so you can see what you're doing. 
it's essential when cutting printing blocks that you have good natural light to see what you're working on and also so that you do not strain your eyes. So if you have a space, like the one on the picture there, with a large window or perhaps skylight windows or patio doors, this can provide great natural daylight, which is always the best type of lighting to work in. And as well as not straining your eyes, it will enable you to see the colours of your prints and your printmaking inks a lot more clearly. Now sometimes we're not always as fortunate to have great big windows and access to natural light in a good way. So if you are unable to have a lot of natural light in the room that you're selecting for printing, perhaps look at investing in good artificial lighting, maybe boost the lighting that's in the room already. So things to look at are, for example, you can purchase daylight lamps from art or craft stores to boost the main lighting in the room. So having a daylight lamp switched on next to you when you're working on lino cutting or wood engraving, for example, can make a big difference to the printmaking experience and also achieving the right results because you can see properly. Um, and sometimes if you're working, for example, with wood engraving, you can get magnifying glasses with the lights on them so that you can actually see your wood engraving a little clearer because it's very small, it's very tiny and frankly can be very strenuous on the eyes, hands and shoulders. So sometimes having better lighting can just alleviate that a little bit. Um, so perhaps it's worth thinking about when you select your space for printmaking to actually consider the lighting within a room to make sure that you get the best possible space. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of people choose conservatories um, on the back of their houses and things like that because the lighting is just glorious and it's just lovely to work in bright light. I mean, I'm somebody very affected by the light. If you've got good lighting in a room, in a studio, in a place where we work, it's just, it's really lovely to work and it just makes me feel a lot happier than a, a sort of dark room where you're shut off from the light and you can't really see things properly. It's a very, very different feeling. I want to talk here about inspiration all around. So for successful printmaking, I find that we need to be constantly inspired and have lots of wonderful ideas for creating our prints. So that I find if you surround yourself with ideas and inspiration, this can really help you when you're actually working and printmaking. So let me run through a few suggestions for surrounding yourself with inspiration in your home studio. So first of all, why not frame some finished prints? They can be your own, they could be other artists, and hang them in on the walls of your studio space. I mean, this could be your dining room or spare bedroom or kitchen. Just hang up some prints that you've got stuff to look at for inspiration. You might want to also stick idea sheets to the wall. Um, if you're not sure what idea sheets are, do have a look at our introduction to printmaking course for information. The second picture there, the one in the middle, is an idea sheet. It's basically a big um, sheet of paper with ideas all stuck onto it, a bit like a mood board. So sticking those kind of things on the walls around you can really help to inspire you because you've kind of got your ideas there. Um, creative people are very visual people, I know I am. If I can see stuff around me, then I know it's there and I, c I can draw from it. Always have your sketchbooks nearby and readily available. There's a big pile of sketchbooks there on the slide on the left. Perhaps also pin your proofs of prints to the wall if you can. So when you've kind of um, tested a print, maybe you're halfway through a wood cart, you want to just proof it and check it's okay. It's half done, maybe stick that on the wall and then you can kind of carry on working through it. And whilst you're pinning things or sticking things to the wall, think about pinning your drawings or photographs to the wall as well. Now for some of us, we can't put things on the wall because they may be the, the walls of our home and um, our other halves or people we live with might have um, a bit of a panic if they start to see everything stuck to the wall. So why not create some pin boards instead? So get a big cork board and actually stick or pin your prints, cutting sketches and photos to those boards and then you can prop them up around where you work instead. So you don't have to be um, destroying your walls of your home. Um, I have shelves of printmaking books all around me wherever I work um, and if you're anything like me, if you're into printmaking, you do tend to buy books about the subject. I've got quite a lot actually now, um, so those are on shelves around me when I work. It's good to kind of grab them and, and look at artists' work or um, look at clarification on a technique if you need to, so do have your printmaking books to hand as well. And another thing which may be available to some of you, not everyone, is perhaps work in a room that has a good view. If you can look out of the window and see greenery, trees, fields or a lovely landscape, that can make such a difference to 
firstly perhaps keeping you calm keeping you in that creative sort of hub that space that we we talked about sort of earlier on in the video so wherever you work wherever your studio may be you want to carve it out to be this 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 creative space this printmaking studio of yours surrounded with inspiration so when you move into this space you've got everything you need and lots of ideas to keep you inspired for when you're printmaking now, a bit of a health and safety tip for this one, um, making sure that your desk and chair are the right height. So as I said, this is a health and safety tip more than anything else. But regardless of where you're working, it is essential to make sure that your desk and chair are set at the right height and angle for you. This will prevent any strain or injuries to your back, neck or wrists when you're working. Sometimes we can get quite achy wrists, shoulders and necks because we're looking closely at what we're working on, we get carried away. So it's important to do as much as you can to alleviate any potential problems. Now if you can't adjust the height of your table or your desk because it's, it's a fixed table, perhaps look at buying an adjustable chair, one that can move up or down and shift to make you comfortable when you're working. And it's important that you think about this for when you're cutting your blocks, as well as when you're printing or burnishing. Um, other bits and pieces that you might want to look at um, investing in include a bench hook for lino cut and wood cut, perhaps a sandbag for wood engraving, or perhaps a magnifying glass or um, wrist supports if you have trouble with your wrists. Um, and if you wear glasses, please do remember to wear them. I wear glasses when I do close work, so it's important for me to wear them. So all these little bits and pieces, adjusting your um, table to be the right height, your chair, making sure that if you've got a bench hook, your lino is not going to go flying across the table when you're working. These all help to make the studio comfortable to work in physically, as well as all the, the sort of mental inspiration that we've talked about um, just in the last tip. So tip number six is about storing your tools and materials safely. Good quality, well looked after tools will last you a lifetime. So in particular, let's pay attention to our cutting tools. Now you want to store them either in the boxes or the packets that they came in or dedicated holders. What you really don't want to do is throw them all in a box together or a bag because the cutting blades can become damaged. They can bash against each other and you get little chips in them. Or you put your hand and try and get one out and you cut your fingers. And I know this from experience, I have done it before. Now, wherever you store these things, you need to make sure the storage area is clean and dry and will prevent any rust or dirt from damaging the tools as well. There is certainly nothing more frustrating than damaged or poorly stored tools or blunt tools when you're working. You just want everything to work, for the tools to be sharp and safe. And when it comes to storing your printing inks or other chemicals, the same sorts of thing apply. Make sure that where you store them is clean and dry, that the bottles and tubes are closed properly, and of course that any bottles are stored the right way up. And yes, I have definitely done that as well before. I've put printing inks in boxes where I've been teaching, and then you open the box and you realise that one of the inks wasn't closed properly and it's kind of spilt everywhere. It's very, very frustrating and a nightmare to clear up, especially if it's oil-based ink. Um, so perhaps things like plastic storage boxes um, or a dedicated cupboard or shelves where everything can be lined up and you know where it all is can be very helpful. Um, this also really helps um, when you so you know where things are so you can find them quickly. So if you are printmaking and you've only got an afternoon and you need to get your liner cutting tools, then you need your printing inks, then you need this, that and the other. You can go straight to these places and know where the tools are, know they're going to be safe, know they're going to be working properly for you and you can focus on your creative tasks. Another thing to bear in mind is if you do have children or pets around the house, do make sure that any cutting tools or chemicals are carefully locked away when you are not using them. So swiftly moving on to tip number seven, we're looking here at a dry area for your finished prints. Now if you've spent a number of hours, days or sometimes even weeks designing a print, maybe cutting it out of lino, inking, printing, we don't want to fall at the final hurdle which is the stage where the ink is all printed and you're waiting for it to dry. Now this actually is often one of the trickiest parts of the home studio to manage and account for, finding enough space to dry your prints safely. Now in my mind there are essentially two options available to you. Number one is laying the prints out flat and number two is hanging them up. 
So if you're laying them out f flat, you can put them, for example, on the floor, on a table, in a drying rack if you're particularly lucky, or even on shelves. So wherever you lay these out, wherever this flat space is, make sure they don't get trodden on, blown away by the wind from an open door or window, or got covered in dust or lino or wood shavings or slide around and get stuck to each other. So you need to find a space where they can lay out potentially for 24 to 48 hours and not be damaged. So if you do lay your prints out on the floor, and I've done this many a time, be careful you don't have to walk around them or you haven't got a dog walking around that might tread on them. Or if they're on a table by a window, perhaps don't leave the window open because they could blow away with the wind. Now if you're hanging them up as the alternative, see whether you can find a good drying rack or a simple washing line can be really good. Um, now when I lived in a small one bedroom flat, and actually the picture here is of this particular flat that I lived in, I used to run string across from window to window. It's a big bay window and I ran a piece of string from the handle of one side to the other and then I used clothes pegs to, hang, to hang prints up. It was great. Um, and you can see actually this was a very very light and bright flat. I had lots of daylight so it was beautiful for working in. So you can also get, um, you can kind of get the plastic clothes lines that have got maybe four or five bits of string on them. You can hook them to one side of a room, extend them and then put the other end out to the other side of a room. So for example if you have a utility room that can be great or if it's maybe summer, it's a hot day, it's sunny, you can use a clothes line outside as well. There's nothing stopping that. Just be cautious if I don't know, people are mowing the lawn and you've got little bits of grass flicking everywhere. Um, but anywhere where you've got a piece of string, you can pretty much hang these up with clothes pegs. So if you can find a warm, dry environment for this as well, that will encourage your prints to dry quickly. Sometimes a small fan heater placed underneath prints that are hanging up to dry will speed up that process as well. Um, and wherever you work, make sure that your room is free from dust, which can very, very easily get stuck into your printing ink if you're not careful. Tip number eight is have your tools and materials to hand. So in number six, in tip six, we talked about storing your tools safely and securely for the purposes of not damaging them or yourselves. But I also find it makes sense to have them easily to hand as well. What you don't want to do is start working and then as you need something you have to walk into the next room or go up into the loft or into the garage to find the tool that you need to use next. So think about where you can have your materials to hand in the space that you're going to be using for printmaking. So things like hooks on the walls can be a good idea or shelving designed to accommodate all your inks can be helpful. And don't forget the little things too. I tend to have um, sort of tins or pots or jars of general materials to hand. Things like pens, pencils, craft knives, rubbers, metal rulers, all the kind of little bits and pieces that you use regularly, um, all within arm's reach so you don't have to um, kind of walk away from your printmaking, find something, come back to it, because that can lose your flow. Um, so having everything at arm's reach can prevent frustration when working. And I certainly know that the creative flow, the creative process is important to um, nurture it and having your materials to hand can just keep that process flowing so that when you start print making and you go, right, today's a day where I'm going to be printing or today's a day where I'm going to be drawing and transferring my idea onto the block and then cutting it out. You need to just allow that to happen. So if you are cutting, for example, you want to make sure that you've got stuff to hand. Maybe you need a pencil to, to strengthen a line or a rubber to ro move out a line because you want to just change it slightly. You just need to have all that stuff sitting there to hand so that you can um, then sort of carry on with your work, get in your flow and work it uninterrupted. Now this, you know, this might not always be convenient. You might not be able to have shelves or hooks on the wall to have all your stuff. So if you are working on a space that is used for other things at other times, like a dining room table, make sure you bring all your tools and materials, get them all out first, have them all ready, so that when you start printmaking, you haven't got to move away from that space for any other reason, perhaps other than to get a cup of tea. Okay, so tip number nine is about allocating your time. So now that you've actually set up a studio space or you've found somewhere that you're going to be using for your printmaking, it's important to set aside time in your diary to actually use it. Now we all have different levels of time we can dedicate to creative pursuits. So I'm not saying that you have to say and do two hours a week or two days a week. 
but simply allocate what time is reasonable for you and then stick to it. So don't perhaps over ascribe time. So don't say I'm going to do five solid days a week if you actually only have a couple of hours in for some evenings, for example. Um, one thing that I do is I find myself setting aside regular time for different things and that can help to organise me properly and progress my prints at a much quicker rate. So for example, I spend one morning a week on sketching, finding ideas and things like that. I then set aside small bursts of time for preparing or cutting blocks. So when I've got um, a couple of wood engravings on the go, I find that I get quite tired hands and eyes very quickly. So I tend to allocate little half hour bursts to carving into a wood engraving because I find that if I get tired, I tend to make mistakes or I slip off into bits I don't want to do. So for myself, I have to do little bursts of wood engraving and I leave it out and I come to it whenever I have some time. Now when I come to printing, I would also set aside maybe an afternoon or even a full day for printing because it gives me time to get um, a whole edition or the majority of an edition done in one or two sittings. The most important thing though I think that I'm trying to get across is the clearing of the diary. So it's the it's the setting aside the time rather than just, just hoping you can do an hour or here or two hours there. It's the setting of intention that I'm doing printmaking, this is my time to do it and nothing else is going to mess with it. It also means that if you allocate your time in that way, for example, so setting aside time for preparing ideas, for cutting the block, for printing, it means when you come to your studio, you know exactly what you're getting on with. So rather than spending time deciding what to do now, because we often have three, four, five or, or more projects on the go at once. So instead of going, oh, what should I do? Shall I work on this print or shall I sketch or shall I do this? You can spend a lot of time deciding what to do. If you've already set up a schedule, let's say, and I know I'm making it sound very businesslike and official, but if you have set up different bits of time, you're going to do different things, it means you can just turn up to your studio and go, oh, this morning I'm drawing or oh, this morning I'm printing or oh, today I'm cutting this block that I was working on last week so you know what you're doing. So it, it almost takes away the pressure. It takes away the, I have to think about what I'm doing. It's just, well, I've got three prints on the go. This is the one I'm burnishing today, for example, or, you know, I'm cutting into the lino. So perhaps think about setting up a weekly schedule so that you don't have to think about it too much. Um, now this doesn't work for everybody, but perhaps you can just go, yes, Tuesdays, they're my printmaking day. And then you can perhaps say, well, I start off by doing sketching because it helps me get creative or I start out with printing because I actually find if I just start printing, I then think of other ideas to work on later on. So however you work will be possibly different to me, be different to anybody else. But do dedicate time to your printmaking so that you actually progress through it. Now, tip number 10, final tip is get out regularly. So now that you have a studio space and I've told you to allocate time to be in it, I'm also going to recommend that you get out of it regularly. And by this, I mean spending some time on research, such as visiting a gallery or exhibition, taking time to go drawing and sketching, perhaps going to drawing classes, or just meeting up with our other artists and um, speaking to them about printmaking. So when printmaking from home to keep us inspired, we need to constantly fuel our creativity and push our printing boundaries. So we want to constantly be developing. So I find that it's always good to see what other artists are up to by visiting printmaking exhibitions or even dropping into open access sessions or artist talks at local galleries or printing studios. It's important when you do work in isolation, so you work at home, that we don't lose that all important motivation and creativity. By staying connected with other creatives, this really helps us to grow and develop as artists and printmakers. Now, this is regardless of the level that you're at, whether you're a beginner or whether you have been practicing printmaking for many, many years. So I hope that these 10 tips have been useful for you when working at home and you're working on your printmaking. Um, but I just want to talk to you a little bit about the online introduction to printmaking course, which might help you with firstly setting up your studio, looking at materials, but also introduce maybe a, a technique or two that you don't know about already or introduce you to printmaking if you've never done it before. So this particular online course goes through what printmaking is and we talk a little bit about its history. We then spend the whole 
um, first two modules, modules one and two, preparing for printmaking. So we go into a little bit more detail about your studio space, about the materials you need. And we also talk about how to generate ideas for your printmaking, so where to get source material. Now modules 3 to 12, this is the core part of the course, are all of the various printmaking techniques that we teach. And these ones are listed here. So we talk with talk about monoprinting, holograph, lino cut, wood cut and wood engraving. So lots of relief printing and we develop that a little bit more with some experimental relief printing and advanced multicolor relief printing. We also touch on wood engraving and some simple screen printing. The important thing to bear in mind is all of these techniques can be carried out from home in a small-ish space um, using very simple um, techniques. None of them require a printing press. Um, they just require a few specialist materials, things like your rollers um, and your lino or your wood or your, your screen for screen printing, and you're off and away. So why would you study with us? Well. With this particular course, you can start immediately. Um, there's an online registration and we have absolutely no entry requirements so anybody can study this. This course has been developed from successful printmaking classes. So as I said at the very start of the video, I've been teaching for over 10 years in various art centers and places across the country. So this course has been developed from that. So within this course, you will actually get to see me um, demonstrate printmaking techniques. So it's all online video tutorials. Some of them like this, as some of them are information modules where I talk through a PowerPoint presentation to explain something. But all the modules that are to do with techniques, we do actual demonstrations and show you example works and talk through some tips and things and how to make it all work. So it's kind of like I'm there with you in your home studio going through the particular modules. Now these are all accompanied by 250 pages of written course material, so a, a, a manual which you can download as PDFs and either look on your computer or print them out. And they have all step-by-step -step instructions with colour photos next to them. Um, so it's tuition by myself, Susan, um, printmaker and author and all the things I talked about earlier. Um, it's also important to know that you don't need access to a printing press to get started. It is simply um, a few materials and you're off and away. Um, and all you need is internet access to access these videos. And I'm really pleased about this because this course I used to just deliver to people in the UK and it used to be a hard copy file that I'd send out and post it out. But now all you need is internet access and anybody across the world can log into our learning portal, access the videos, download the printable um, PDFs and there's lots of tips and stuff in there as well. Um, and you can get started. Um, so all the information can be found on introduction to printmaking.com. But before we finish this video, I just want to talk you through a special offer that is available for anybody that has watched this 10 essential tips video and it's a 50% discount. It's a special offer that I'm running for a very limited time only. Um, and the course that we offer is usually 199, so it's usually nearly 200 pounds for 12 months. Um, and what we're doing is we're doing a half price offer because I just want as many of you as possible to be on the course, to be studying, to um, kind of talk to each other and see other people's work and kind of get involved with this online community of printmakers. So instead, I've taken it down 50% down to £99 for 12 months access. Um, and with both of those, there are monthly payment options available, which would be £19.99 a month or £9.99 a month. So for this special offer, it would just be £9.99, so just under £10 a month, and you're off and away. And when you um, register, you get access to all of the modules instantly, so we don't hold back any modules. They are all there and ready to access from the moment you start. So you don't have to start with the first technique one, which is mono printing. You can start on lino cut or wood cut if you want to. So that's what the course is. That's a special offer. Go and have a look. www.introductiontoprintmaking.com forward slash offer. So thank you ever so much for watching this um, video, which I hope has helped you a little bit with working from home with your printmaking. So enjoy your printmaking from home. I just love to hear about people that are doing printmaking and enjoying it or getting into it for the first time. Um, if you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing, have a look at my main website, which is magenta-sky.com. We have a blog. I also have a newsletter where I send out tips and things. So if you want to register on the newsletter, please let me know. Um, and thank you ever so much and hopefully I will see you soon.